Hi, Mark. Hi, John. So, uh, show me your badge. Sure. So, I'm talking to the uh, charming Mark Charmer. And, uh, and Mark, you know, you've been involved for a long time and uh, I think kind of pushing the edge about, about how to uh, really connect water content and uh, water ideas to a kind of expanding audience and sort of uh, like increase the number of people that are dipping into the into the media water ecosystem. Sure, yeah. I mean, well, I'm I'm a, I'm a co-founder of Acvos, uh, Acvo.org, and, and everything that we do is reliant because we're building internet and mobile phone tools that make it much easier to bring development aid projects online. But I, I just know that unless you can raise the overall communications competence of of a sector like this, and at the same time somehow deprofessionalize. De certain aspects of it, then it's going to be really difficult to get people to take these tools up. So what does it look like? I mean, what, what, how do you see that if you were here in Stockholm? Well, uh, the water cube that we're in now was really instigated when I went to World Water Forum in Turkey a few years ago, and I hated it. I hated every second of that awful conference, full of, with its evil security gates and its scanners and and all these people behind these walls with with trade with booths and plenary sessions and it was all a bit like being in 1975 and um, I didn't really see what had changed and we have these incredible tools in our hands I mean you're filming this on an iPhone now um, and um, th it didn't feel to me that anybody was really taking things, things forward so what we were looking at I, I kind of came away and thought what really should be happening is you should be at events like this and you've got all these experts and they should be linked, well certainly we should be bringing to life what they do. So why, why shouldn't we be uh, just uh, depending on the media or communications professionals for this? Why should well, we be talking to the nerds and geeks? Well, I, I, you know, I, I tend to think that, I mean with ACFO I've always tried to avoid carving out an empire for the marketing and communications team. Um, which, which has a downside, it means you don't have a big budget. You know, Peter and Thomas have the bigger budgets on engineering and partnerships. And my communication is relatively small, but our goal is to infiltrate everybody and, and enable everyone in the organisation to become a communicator. Um, now obviously people respond to that differently, um, but it's amazing how well it works. Um, because you've got different tools, so some people can write well, others don't necessarily write well, but they are really good when they pick up a video camera. Um, and um, others are really great photographers. And what, what you find is that there is almost everybody in your organisation that can be brought to life more vividly. And they're the people that you really want to have come to life. You don't, I, I mean, I used to work in, I worked for um, a big public relations agency in Soho Square in London for eight years. Um, and. And I used to sit in an office there being paid you know, quite a lot of money per day to interview people who were working on a Palestinian education initiative for Hewlett Packard. And it was insane that I was being paid to sit in Soho interviewing these people over the phone and then writing that story up. And, and that, that, sort of, that sort of reliance on communications people creating case studies of what is happening. And, and I, that's the old era. I mean, it'll linger around like you know forever, to, to sort of, it, but but its role will diminish. I think what's really happening now is how do you have the people doing the real work? How do you give them the confidence and give them the backing and the support um, to really tell the story that they see? So, wh where do you think we're going to be in five years? Um, that's what we need. That's what we need to decide. I think there are some inevitable things, and I think when you're dealing with the future, you have to decide what is. Just there are inevitable things like the rise of the mobile phone is it ex it's just extraordinary. And I think we've had a really different response at Watercube this time. It's the fourth one we've done, third year we've, we've been here um, in Stockholm. And I think there's something connected to this whole, you know, the Arab Spring. And ev everybody here has clocked onto this now. And I think they all know, maybe some of them only subliminally, but some of them, and some of them more overtly, that... They need to get to grips with this stuff and these video and things like that. Because if they don't, then they're gonna they're gonna lose control of what they do. I mean, you, or, you know, they they they're, they're gonna really struggle to keep up with people's expectations. You're gonna have people filming what they're not achieving, <laughs> and you're you know, and, and they have to 
they have to really take control of their own story and describe what they do. And I don't mean, it's not like old school communications where you take control of your story by silencing people. Uh, it, it is really telling the story of what you do, doing it, doing it authentically. So it's really trying to m marry a, a revolution in water with a, a revolution in communications. Yeah, 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 I guess. Now, there are a lot of things that we can do to make this better. I mean, we've had a lot of people saying here, could you take the water cube to this conference and this conference and this conference? But, you know, I don't want us to, I don't want the water sector to outsource video communications to guys that come and do it for them. It's just re-specializing. It's yeah. gone from inside organizations to yeah. you. We just become a cheaper version of the video production studios we used to have before. Or we take it's like taking the press studio out into the onto the hall. That's not what I want us to do. I mean, you know, our job is to it, it, so we have to, you know, we've just been talking here, what do we do next? And you know, we're looking at how do we do this so that it it's not something they can just outsource. How how you have a lot of very talented managers here. Who, you, who are great communicators, but they're sort of in suits now. And they spend their time commissioning the outsourcing of communications. And I want them to communicate. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mark. Great. Nice to see you, John.